Well, hello, Shoreline congregation and friends uh, scattered around the Monterey area, around uh, the United States, and around the world. Uh, thank you for continuing to walk this journey with us uh, through this time of great challenge uh, globally and nationally, and just looking at how God's word is uh, strength for us. It uh, helps uh, remind us of who he is and what he does and who we are in a time like this and any time we walk through life. So we're continuing through kind of my top 10. It's not necessarily my, the only 10 passages I love. I love the whole word of God. I'm not saying that these 10 are more important than any other part, but they're 10 that have really impacted me. And we're gonna look together at the beginning of Proverbs chapter three today. And just let the wisdom of God and the truth of his word strike your heart. And I'll share a few thoughts with you after I read these opening six verses of Proverbs chapter three. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. I want to give you three words of encouragement today that will carry you through the rest of this week. And really, if you hear them and respond to them, will help carry you through all of your life and ultimately into the arms of Jesus someday when this life ends. Just great wisdom for every day of life. Here's the first thing. Keep God's word in your heart and in your life. And if you want some motivation, I mean, I, I mean, just reading God's word should be motivation enough, knowing that God has breathed this word by his spirit, that it speaks truth to us, that it encourages us, that it teaches and it challenges and it grows us as followers of Jesus. But I love in Proverbs how it says, if we really let God's word saturate who we are, it will give us life, it will give us peace, and it will give us prosperity. And that prosperity it can come in the form of stuff, but prosperity is much more than that. It's prosperity of relationships, prosperity of joy. It's just an overflow of God's goodness. Here's my encouragement. Open the word of God every day, every day of your life. And even if you don't feel what God's doing through that, God's doing something in you, and God is bringing you life as you feed on his word. God is bringing you peace in whatever you're facing. God's word can bring you peace, and also God's word brings you prosperity. And then the proverb goes on and basically says, let love and faithfulness guide you and direct you. To let the love of God faithfulness to him, but also how you love other people, how you're faithful to them. Let those things guide you and direct you. And then it says, then you'll receive favor and how you relate with people and also a good name. When you love people well, when you're faithful in your workplace, at your school, in your neighborhood, when people go, oh, she's just a faithful person. He's a faithful person. I and mean, if they say it, they're following through. They, they are just faithful. You're becoming more like Jesus. We're told that we will find favor with people. Well, that makes sense. If somebody says, oh, that person is totally faithful, uh, that, that, I'm gonna wanna be around them. Hey, that person is radically faithless. You cannot trust them as far as you can throw them. And that doesn't, that doesn't create favor in relationships. But then also, that, that you will have a good name. What's your reputation? Man, living with love and faithfulness will earn you a reputation that, that brings honor to your name and ultimately honor to the name of Jesus. And then Proverbs 3 tells us to, to trust and surrender to God. Trust in the Lord, how much? With all your heart. And that means you lean not on your own understanding. You trust in him so much that his understanding is greater than your own. And in all your ways, submit to him. There's that surrender, that submission, and he will make your paths straight. I wanna encourage you to, to walk every moment of every day trusting in God, even when things are looking tough and then to surrender, to submit, to follow his ways. I often describe it like this. If, if God's word, which is true, and how I see the world come into conflict, I, I don't want it to end up this way. Well, what I see and what I want and what I desire and how I see the world, that overcomes what God wants. I wanna say, no, whatever I see, whatever I think, it comes under God's word. That God's word is my authority, I submit to him. But I wanna do this, I submit to it. But I think this, it's good to think. But ultimately, if God's word is true, if it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, I have to acknowledge in submitting that I don't have it all figured out. 
I mean, I don't know how a carburetor works. I'm not totally sure when I turn the light switch on why I get the light I do. There's people smarter than me. Well, ultimately, God made us all. He's smarter than us. So walk in the wisdom of God throughout the rest of this week, into the weekend, and we'll see you online or on campus or in your car on campus or in the courtyard worshiping together this Sunday. God bless you. And let me just pray and I'll send you off. I encourage you to have a good day. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your wisdom. Help us trust in your ways. Help us not rely on ourselves, but submit to you and watch the good blessings you bring as we walk with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day.